What's going on guys? Welcome to another cash game review session. Today I've got a friend Iris who goes by no comply in the Twitch chat and his five Zoom sessions on Pokestars. As always, if you enjoy these videos guys, please make sure you give them a like, subscribe to the channel and all that business. And enjoy the video and I will see you in the next one. So, let's jump in. So, do you know preflop ranges? I bet you're going to call this straight off the bat. Okay, we're following the 672. I don't like it. To be fair, you can probably, again, I'll talk, I'll try and talk about everything from a theory point of view, right? But, like, when we look at hands like 6-7 suited, if we're, you know, if we're against a fun player and a fun player, we can probably make money by calling. Tens, we're going to open the card. Pretty standard. So, I think we should probably go a bigger size in. What's, do you use 2.2x from every position? Because you should be going 2.5x from these positions. If you use preflop Bible, I think that's fine. Have 2.2x from here, 2.5x from here. If that's confusing for you, just go 2.5x from every position. I noticed somebody was trying to do that, like the preflop Bible did, and then kept getting mixed up. So I think that we should just be opening 2.5x from every position. Especially at these stakes, we kind of don't mind just taking it down pre. There's definitely argument for even going 3x at the lower stakes. And just forcing more folds and paying less rake. Honestly, just make it either all 2.4x or all 2.5x. And maybe even 3x from the bottom. We just, we we're happy playing bigger pots. Uh, pretty good flop here. I'm okay going for a small size. Again, because the pot's even smaller than usual now, we kind of don't mind sizing up on this board. But I'm just betting very small with range. I think this is okay, just under half pot. We can consider betting turn with this hand as well. In fact, I am betting turn with this hand. I'm probably going to go three quarters on this turn here with tens. I understand checking, but you better bet this river, though. I'll be very upset if you check this river. I'm okay with the size, and I think you can go, I think you can go big here, though, because it looks kind of bluffy, so I think you're going to get caught by a similar range. Anyway, what I think we should do is bet the turn. The reason being, he's going to have some King X, but like a lot of players are just going to raise them, especially at these lower stakes. So I think he's going to raise King X a lot. The thing with 10s here is it needs some protection. So let's say we could check some over, some pairs, right? Some two pairs. Let's check aces where there's not really that many bad cards. There's still a lot of over cards here that you can have. Another reason why I think we should bet the turn is I don't think that fun players or most players at this stake, and I would say don't make generalizations, I don't think enough players at this stake are going to check raise bluff on this turn after floating, even if they've got something like 9, 10 of spades or 5, 6 of spades. Meaning that they're just going to have a lot of check calls, meaning that we can bat and still get called by a lot of worse hands. Like 10 jack of spades, jack queen of spades, ace jack of spades, ace 5 of spades. He's still going to 4, 5 of spades, 6, 4 of spades, ace 4 of spades. I think there's way more reasons to bat this turn. Way more reasons that merit batting more than checking. So I, I think I'd like to bet this turn. I think this is a little bit tight. I understand why you're doing it, and then we have an easy call on a lot of rivers, but I think at these stakes, definitely betting there is gonna be is gonna be higher EV. A6 suited, what do we do here? We open under the gun. I'm okay with this. I don't really like opening A6 suited and A7 suited. But I think or ace do suited, but I think it's fine. I think this is a board we want to be very careful on, so I'm definitely gonna start off with a check. I, I generally speaking actually don't mind on boards that we want to check a reasonable amount I'm okay just betting when we have bottom pair because it needs the most protection and that way is like an easy way to balance some bets with weaker hands so we're not just betting our, our very nutted hands so like with the 7-3 for example I don't hate uh, I assume you just min raise me calls I don't hate betting on this flop just because it needs the most protection I feel as though you're going to be more passive than than most players, and I think that's why your win rate's not going to be big. That's just a, an assumption from from ten hands. But now we're in, so the the thing is again with with this seven three. Basically, we want to semi bluff this hand. The reason being is twofold. First of all, we want to protect. If he has a hand like six seven up, no. If he has a hand like eight nine offsuit, he's got absolutely nothing. But he's got two over cards. Secondly, we can't really continue on many turns. Like versus this size, it's very difficult to continue here with the three. So I think just betting the flop and effectively start bluffing makes more sense. The A6 is kind of gross. I don't mind check folding. It is a small size though. So, you know, I think we're getting too good of a price. If, if there's a diamond on board, we have at least a check call, maybe even a check raise. I don't hate the fold. It does seem to me just at a guess that you're probably going to be more passive than most. And this is kind of dirty with the 7-3. I don't hate just folding versus a big size. But this is why we can't continue on a lot of boards. So I think betting bottom pairs, you know, we can check our top pairs sometimes and second pairs. 
I'm okay with this three bat. Do you use your stats at all? Because I'd be interested to know if you use your stats. False to three bat 100%. Not really many hands, enough hands to ded dedicate a sample. But I I'm okay with the three bat. Uh, and I'm okay with this bet on this flop here. I guess we'll just check fold turn now. Kind of a dumb spot with sevens. We could... I, I think if this nine was a rainbow turn, I would just blast. Because we're literally at the bottom of our range, pretty much. Turn jack. It's... This is the problem. Against that size, he's just going to float all of his shit. And he's going to call, like... And do you know what? It wouldn't surprise me if fun players just call with eights once versus a small size in position. So, I honestly, the guys, even though theory should probably bat with range, just fucking just check fold sevens. Just forget about it. As played, I don't hate turning this into a bluff, just because we're low down in our range. But it's not great. So, honestly, I don't hate just check folding. As played, we should probably bluff the river, to be fair. Just, again, just being very low down in our range. Think about it, we're not actually three betting any worse pairs. What, what can we actually have that's worse than sevens here that three bats and then bats and checks? Maybe like 7-8 suited that isn't clubs. We're actually so low down in our range with 7s here. It's ridiculous. We should probably bluff this from a theory point of view. I wouldn't hate it just betting like 3 quarters part. Good to see that you put in hands in review though that you're unsure of. Uh, yeah, I don't mind betting this turn once it goes check, check. I don't mind going this kind of size. I'm, I'm probably always bluffing river though. Because we block 10x hands, we block jack x hands. And we have nothing. Because you can still have like ace, ace highs and such. So I think I'm probably bluffing this combo. Yeah, and we have a ton of Jack X here. We don't really have three X. He's just probably going to call Ace Ten. That's the only problem. But yeah, I, li I like the bluff of King Queen. I like it. Ten Seven suited loose, I think, from the cutoff, if I'm not mistaken. So cutoff opening ranges. Yeah, borderline hand. So I'm very much okay with you folding here as you're learning. But again, at these stakes, people are probably going to be over folding. To be honest with you, is this three bet? Is this three bet start here? Is this guy got one point nine percent three bet? Yeah, just this guy's a net then. 1.9% three bet is absolutely wild. Which means, like, again, with my hood, it's more color coordinated. I'm going to look around and I'm going to look at the three bet start and I'm going to see his three bet starts 1.9 and see his stats here. This is only three hands, so that doesn't count. See this guy's difference in... When you generally see a big difference in VPIP and PFR the, or RFI, they're going to be a fish. So I, I would open this here without a shadow of a doubt because he's not going to three bet without a hand. Absolute net. This guy's unknown, seems like a fun player. This guy's a fun player. We want to play these kind of hands in position against fun players. Even though from a theory point of view, yeah, this is possibly a fold or a very borderline open, on a table like this, in a spot like this, it then becomes such a profitable open. The difference, I think, is huge in those kind of spots. But as you're starting out, if you're not used to, you know, the hood and stuff like that, then I can understand folding, but maybe one table, right? If you're not being able to focus on the table around you, play one table instead of two massively increase your win rate. The, the, the three things that will make you the most money in poker, making sure you're focusing in a good mental state. There's one. Two, game selection, making sure you're playing in good games or, you know, ideally low rate games or just, you know, ones with lots of fish. And three, exploiting fish. Three things that will make you the most money in poker. Do those three things, you'll be able to make a living from it. You don't even need to be that good. I was shit for God knows how many years. I'm still shit now. Three bit and ace king standard, like the sizing. Probably betting here, blocking ace queen suited. I'm probably going a bit bigger here, just on this kind of board. I don't think a third really makes sense. We want to utilize our advantage, and we block king queen and ace queen, which are two very viable hands. So I think I want to bet a bit bigger here in general, because we're talking about ranges, right? We want to bet bigger with a lot of our strong hands. King queen, ace queen, aces, kings, queens, stuff like that. So I think I'm going to go about half part on this texture with this combo. But as long as we're betting, I think it's fine. Uh, pretty nice turn. I think this kind of board, because it's so good for us, we just generally want to bat a lot. I think Jax is a good combo to bat. We can still get caught by a lot worse, and it, it needs protection as well. Like, a queen or an ace is a bad card, you know? There's still a shitload you can call with that's worse here. I think we want to bat this. This seems quite passive. Yeah, I like a big bat. This might be a little bit on the large side, just because the SPR is going to be smaller, but I think it's okay. And also, like, I'd probably go 18 here, because I, I really want to get called. And I'm betting this turn with Jax as well. Again, for the same reasons, we just want to get called by worse. Too passive here. Yes, there's an overcard, but like, he doesn't really have any of the strongest hands. He doesn't have pocket nines, doesn't have ace king, shouldn't have king queen at full frequency. We just have like the best hands so often that we want to put more money in. We also want to be balanced when we bet the flop that we're going to be betting with quite a lot of bluffs. So we want to bet with quite a lot of value. Jax is an easy value bet. Again, yeah, I can tell that you're kind of passive. 
I'd go smaller than this just because what we're trying to target. And if he calls here, then the pot's then going to be 75 big blinds. And we're going to have 61 behind. We can just bet a bit smaller and then still have less than one stack to pot ratio by the river. Uh, he does call. We finally go for a bet on the river, but we should have been betting earlier, I think, here with the jacks for sure. And then we just jam on this river, if he checks. And it's probably one of the thinnest hands that we're jamming here. He still can have some better hands, by the way. He could have, like, king-queen, he could have sixes, but not that many hands. We have a very, very easy jam here. But less than part, and if he's got it, good luck to him. I'm going to have a reasonable amount of bluffs here. One of my favorite bluffs is going to be something like 10 jack of spades because I would block king jack of spades. I would block king 10 of spades. I'd block queen jack and queen 10 of spades, which can actually call. And we would unblock hearts. So my best bluff here, my favorite bluff would be 10 jack of spades, which I would take this line with. So it's very easy to balance. We go four way with kings. This is another reason why I think we should just raise bigger. 2.5x from every position at these stakes. This is an awkward board, so from a theory point of view, we want to do a lot of checking when we're multi-way. I would just bet here. We also want to bet smaller. When you're against a lot of fun players and on a very wet board, I want to bet probably about half pot here because we want to protect as well. This is getting a bit too big in my opinion, but I think that it's um, I think it's okay. And he folds, which we expect him to a reasonable amount here. So, But your line is absolutely standard. I, I like your line. So I'd probably go about half pot here. We still want worse hands to call. Good. Fives, you have a very easy defend. These hands are just really good to defend the big blind with. They're just very easy to play a lot of the time because we can just flop a nutted hand very easily. Uh, check, check on the flop. Probably check in this turn. I guess we're bluffing with fives. Now what? I'm okay with it, but I'd just rather use hands like four five suited or like ace three suited. Like having the five of clubs isn't really that relevant. He, it's not the worst bluff ever, but the problem is a lot of the stuff he's going to fold we're ahead of anyway. Like, he's going to have hands like ace three of clubs. He's going to have hands like ace king of clubs, ace ten. I think it's just a bit loose. It's kind of annoying because we might have to check fold sometimes. But I think that, like, I don't think it works that well as a bluff because he's, he's going to call a nine. He's going to call a jack. A lot of the stuff that folds when we bluff, he's not really going to fold a better hand. Maybe like six, seven. I don't think it's great. I think it's just a bit overly aggressive. I would prefer a bigger bet if we're gonna go, if we're gonna take this route. Not two x pot. Just just never two x pot, guys. Just don't bother. You don't need to. Uh, I'd be betting pot though if I'm gonna bluff. <laughs> well, that's what you get for trying to bluff. <laughs> just fold quicker. Don't fucking. You don't need to save face in online poker. Uh, yeah, I think it's just a bit. It's kind of weird. So the turn's weird. The turn's the weirdest part because it's one of them where it's like, okay. We kind of want to bat and protect our hand. We can't really check call. It's really kind of a disgusting spot. I'm probably just check folding or check calling versus a, a small enough bat. I don't hate the bluff on the river. I'm probably betting pot though because I want to polarize. And like I say, the problem is a lot of the stuff that folds, we're going to beat anyway. So if we're going to do this, we should just check or we should just bet so much bigger because we need to target. Like, again, the reason why I, I want to be low down in my range when I bluff is because of what we're trying to target. If we bluff three high, we need four high, five high, seven high, ten high, queen high to fold. If we bluff a pair of fives, we need a pair of sixes, pair of sevens, pair of eights, pair of tens, or a jack to fold, right? So the lower down in your range you are, the more hands you get to fold, meaning the better your bluff works, or the more often your bluff works. So when we start bluffing pairs, it gets very, very fucking thin. This isn't a tournament, man. Don't worry about it. <laughs> it's not a spot you're going to need to worry about. All right, yeah, bet this, let's bet this board. Don't mind going about half pot. We do want to protect this hand. Can get value from worse. We've got the back doors as well. Now, again, like, I, I understand, like, right, so in a vacuum, when, when we think about when we bet as well, we want to think about our overall range. We have a lot of over pairs and stuff here. We want to utilize our advantage because he's just limp called. So we want to bet a lot, right? So we're going to bet a lot of our range, so we might as well bet this. This kind of makes sense as a check, but at the same time, there's so many bad turns. Like a nine, a queen, a king, an ace, they're all over cards, and then we're just in a spot. I think we want to be betting here as the pre-flop aggressor. Yeah, sometimes he folds, but now what? Now we probably end up like check folding, or now we can't get called by anything worse. It seems like you're kind of randomly putting money in. You're like, okay, I'll raise jack eight, and then you see a good board, and you're like, okay, I'll check. Uh, the jack eight suited, I would have definitely liked to see a check raise on this flop. Uh, obviously, check back. I'm betting quite a lot on this turn and betting a small size. I'm probably betting a third 
just because of like I'm gonna bat a third with a lot of our range, a lot of my range and balance it. Easy easiest call in the world with this jack eight. You better not fold. I don't care if you think he's got it. Just fucking put the money in. It's check to the river. I don't know what where you're trying to find an excuse to fold, but there isn't one. Click the call button. Seven big blinds. This should have been called a long a long time ago. Thank you. There you go. He's just got fucking absolute garbage. And by the way, you missed out on value. Literally, what were you? What did you fucking take so long for? This is checked to the river. A fish is limp called. Checked to the river, and then just gone out. I'm just going to bet seven big blinds, and you've gone. Oh, oh, what do we do here? Oh, seven big blinds. Oh my god. Oh shit. He's about forty cents. Oh my god. What am I going to do? Slaving over this decision. You've wasted my time. <laughs> Call. Nine seven. What a shit note. What the fuck does this tell you? Tried to bluff him with ace five suited, failed in three bet pot. You basically noted yourself. You literally just noted yourself, but on him. Basically, if he notes you, he should be like, he tried to bluff me with ace five suited in a three bet pot. You fucking, what is this? Oh my God, how does everyone, how do I end up having to coach fucking notes more than the actual poker in these streams? It's ridiculous. Right, you need something like, like check, call, call, A8 on, let's say seven, five, no, seven, three, four, queen, 10. Let's say we tried bluffing him with ace five and we, and we, the flop got check round and then we bet turn and river. That's what we should know him with. We don't need to know that we were bluffing him. <laughs> like, we don't need to know. It's so fucking random that you just noted yourself. Like, oh, I tried to bluff him. <laughs> Good for you. <laughs> like, note yourself, man. You've not put, like, what he called down with or how light he called down with. Like, you know, maybe he had fucking, like, pocket tens and he calls with a set, which would be fair enough. Maybe he had pocket twos, which wouldn't be fair enough. Like, you have to fucking differentiate, like, what your bluffing is and what he's calling down with. Please don't do anything now with it. Please don't do anything now because you've seen 40% three bet. Oh, no. Oh, no. What are you doing? <laughs> oh, no. Iris. The reason... <laughs> The reason we have a HUD is to see that he has a high free bet, three bet frequency. We see this on the HUD. <laughs> we don't need to do this. We can see this on the HUD that he has a high free bet frequency. The note should be hands that he three bets with if we get to showdown with them. This is just going, you might as well just fuck it. Why not? Like, not to mention, it's in 19 hands. He could have just had aces every time. That's like going, okay, three bet percent is 40 in 19 hands and then and then like fucking the next time three bet percent is now 25 in 24 hands like it's just so retarded there's just no need for this any notes that you can get that information on you get that information from your hood the note should be about hands that you've done or specific tendencies we don't need to worry about that plus 19 hands guys anyone that uses a fucking hood completely ignore it until you have a hundred hands and then just use that as a very, very light base. For example, if they three bet 0% and they three bet, they're probably more weighted towards value. If they three bet 25%, they're probably more weighted towards bluffs. Using the words probably, right? If you have less than 100 hands, literally fucking ignore it. Completely ignore it. MeTube don't, because it's going to wind me up in a minute here. We've not even seen what you do with the 9-7, by the way. Okay, we fold at least. Stop trying to get stats on people. You're like, right, let's see his stats on eight hands. <laughs> now, <laughs> to be fair, I'm really shit blind on blind. It's probably queen jack off out of position generally just not okay. I don't know if I've got any ranges for these positions. I do not. I think this should be a fold. I don't really have ranges for this, but I think this should be a fold. It's just not good enough to call a three bet out of position. I think we should fold. We can continue with Queen Jack suited. King Jack's different. King Jack's probably King Jack we should fall back more as a uh, more than call in, I think, as well. But King Jack we're continuing with. I'd actually uh, yeah, I'd much prefer a four bet. I th I think I'd much prefer a four bet. Again, but like you're looking at twenty five percent call, which means that the E V of calling isn't high. If anything, it's probably lower than a folding. Because if the E V was very high to call, we would always call. 
Like, the reason why we'll be calling is just so we're having enough hands to defend with, otherwise we're going to be overfolding. So that's why we're, like, calling at 25% frequency. But against your general players at this stake, it's going to be burning money because they're going to be tighter. So that might be a 25% call in the world of GTO. These guys aren't playing GTO. They're probably three betting a tighter range in general. I know that's making assumptions. But so I think we should just fold it. I think this should definitely be a fold. Now just blast. Just put as much money in as you can. On the turn, because he can, in theory, have some hands like ASACs that want to check back on pot control, he's never going to fold the turn with that hand. So just bet at least 75%. Yep, click that one. Fine with it. And then we can debate on River um, what to do. Okay, fold. In practice, you should fold it, especially at these stakes. Otherwise, you're just going to be burning money. Uh, we three bet the 89 suited. It's a bit out of line. I like it. So let's have a actually look what um, preflop Bible. In fact, preflop Bible will just three bet this pure in these positions. So bottom versus middle position. Yeah, obviously, 8 9 suited in there at full frequency. Yeah, I guess it's fine. Uh, so if we have a call-in strategy as well, it's actually preferring to flat, which I think is fine. At these stakes, flatten's going to be okay because you're not going to get squeezed as much and you don't hate going multi-way with fun players. So I think this is fine to do either with. I think we generally want a V-pip. I think mixing between three betting and call-in is fine. I think you could do either here. So yeah, this should probably be folded pretty, especially at these stakes against an unknown as as played. I like the I like the turn bet. Really bad flop for our hand, really good for our range. Honestly, at these lower stakes, I don't hate just folding this, just checking this, sorry. Just because it's one of them where it's, it's so hard to continue. And because we block some of the hands we want him to have, we want him to have hands like 8-9 of diamonds, 9-10 of diamonds, 7-8 of diamonds, pocket 8s, pocket 9s. It's, it's, it's kind of unlikely versus a small bet he's going to fold a lot here. So if I bet this flop, I'm going to consider like multi-barreling just because we're going to unblock draws. And I just don't think it's going to be very high EV. Like, it's just so unlikely he's going to fold versus a third. Even though, in theory, we should probably bet a third with range because our range is so fucking strong on this board. Just this kind of hand is just absolute trash. I honestly just don't, don't hate checking and just giving it up and just waiting for a better board. I know some of your GTO heads might not. I mean, now we have to bluff. I think we have to bluff this river because we're so low down and we have a shitload of ace-x. We can have ace-jack, we can have ace-queen, we can have ace-ten sometimes, although we're barreling the turn sometimes. We can have hands like ace-five of spades, ace-five of diamonds. Somewhere, uh, as long as it's more than half bat, I think it's fine. We can, It depends on what you're trying to target. No, I think we want to bat. We're so low down in our range, just bat. He might have an ace sometimes, he might hero with king-queen. Look at that. Look what you just got to fucking free showdown. If you're not bluffing nine high, what are you bluffing here? Again, these guys are probably going to be sticky, but then that's good. Like, if he calls with Jack-9 here, by the way, when we bet the river, that's really good for us. Not in this exact scenario, but overall, that's really good for us. So if if we bet, in general, if we bet this river and he calls with Jack-9, that's really, really good for us. So then we tag him as a station, note the hand, but yeah. But yeah, bluff. I'd say this is a mandatory bluff on this river. We literally don't have many worse hands than 9 high. Think about it. We might have 8 high. We never even have five high, because if we do three bet four or five suited, we should barrel the turn. I think this is like a mandatory bluff spot, to be honest, with the nine eye. I think that's a bit too... I saw before that you weren't afraid of bluffing, but this should just definitely be a bluff. Nines, yeah, definitely going to three bet then if we're just having a three bet or four strategy. Having a four bet start would help as well. Oh, you do have four bet start. But again, like a four bet start in, in less than like 500 hands is irrelevant. 9-5 suited, I'm probably just folding pre, but I don't hate raising. Generally, it, again, if I pick, if I want to bet my bottom pairs, I'm generally going to bet bigger because I want to maximize fold equity and I, I want to have less hands floating. So I'm generally going to bet bigger. Yeah, blast this turn on the right-hand side. So this board on the left, we have huge advantage in over pairs, so we can pick a large size in. So I see that you do that. I don't know if you're going, doing it for the right reasons, but we basically, we can bet range with quite a big size in general because we have such an advantage in the overpairs that we just have a huge range advantage on this board. So we can just, you know, bet quite big. Doesn't really make sense in a vacuum of nines because we want worse hands to call, but it does want protection as well. So I'm okay with this sizing. I'd probably go a little smaller, maybe about 11 big blinds, but I think it's fine. Again, no comply. This isn't necessarily theory based, by the way, to go bigger with bottom pairs, but it's just something that from my experience, it works quite well. So I'm going to basically bet like some, for a large size, I'll probably bet bottom pairs, some very strong draws, although I might check raise those, and then hands like, you know, aces and kings and stuff like that. And the river, we could do a few things on. I think unblocking the queen, I mainly just want to bet here. I think I mainly just want to bet and try and target queen X. And going for about three quarters pot to pot is fine. Even over betting would be okay, blocking 9-7. 
We could also consider check calling um, to get called by clubs uh, to, to allow like missed clubs to bluff. But when he has missed clubs or a missed straight draw, he can still have hands like 7-8 or like 8-8 of clubs, which have showdown, which will just check back. So I think that betting on this specific river is going to be good because he still might have 8-8 of clubs here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> What a guy! Right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna flat ace king. I'm gonna trap all the way and then just call down. Ace king suited here. It's kind of a shitty board. I don't hate checking this and just realizing. And we can check some strong hands here as well. Some nine x and some like I, I wouldn't mind checking aces sometimes. And kind of annoying. I wouldn't hate calling. We unblock a lot of the bluffs, but he does have a lot of strong hands here. I really don't know actually. I think you can go either way with this hand. I think Colin's fine, and it's a shit river, a yeah, really shit river. I'm not, I'm not bluffing this hand because it just doesn't achieve a lot. We're, we're specifically trying to get like a nine or a six to fold, I guess. What are we really representing? We have so few seven x. I guess we got Queen Jack, but we're gonna bat that a lot. Yeah, it's just I like, didn't even fold a nine, mate. Like so again, we've got to look at what we're what we're bluffing for. So let's say we have you know four five suited. We can then get like. I guess it doesn't really matter that much, but, you know, he can still have, like, ace-jack, ace-queen that we're ahead of here. Ace-five, stuff like that. I don't think we want to bluff this high up in our range. I, I don't mind the turn call, but, like, I think you call in the turn for the wrong reason. The reason why we want to call this turn is that we have the best hand a lot of the time. Because we have the best hand a lot of the time, we want to be checking on this river. Now, agreed, when he, when he bets the turn and then checks the river, it's likely he's going to have some showdown. But... He doesn't even fold a nine. He's never going to fold a ten. He's never. He's probably not folding a nine. He's never going to fold any straight. We don't get enough to fold with this, so let's just check and take the little bit of showdown that we have and hope he has ace five of hearts, king queen of hearts, stuff like that. Way too aggressive, that. Ace king just has enough showdown to check. When you're on the river and you're deciding to bet, think about what your bet's trying to, achieve, trying to achieve. Are you trying to get a call by worse? If so, what worse hands can call? Are you trying to bluff and get a better hand to fold? If so, what hands can actually fold versus your bet? Kings, we get it in. It's a good start. That's a really good first board. Easy. Uh, let's just double check we did it okay with sizing. So, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, okay with it. About 4x out of position is fine. I'm still going a bit smaller because I want the SPR to be smaller so I've got more play. But that's just the way I like to do it. I think that's absolutely fine. Going to our big blinds. He jams. He shouldn't jam in position. I, I know that he 4-bet jammed 100 bigs with ace-king in position. He shouldn't really be doing much jamming. He shouldn't do any jamming in position. He should just be calling or 4-bet into a small size. Because he has the advantage of position. So 4-bet jams 100 big blinds in position with ace-king. Because he won't do that with aces either. So when he jams there and you're in position, you got kings, you have the nuts. Because you, you you very infrequently see somebody do that with aces. Very infrequently. Uh, Ace-10, I'm okay with the bet. I'm okay checking as well. I prefer just betting when we have a spade. But what's happening with this 4-5? We open and check back three-way. I think that makes sense. Uh, I tag uh, XEP as a fun player because he's just betting one big blind, which isn't really a thing on the turn. When somebody bets one big blind as well, guys, generally what I do is just assume it to be a check. A check that costs money. So, like... Don't level yourself into thinking this is strong or this is weak or whatever. Just assume this is a check. So I basically say this is a check. So if I wanted to bet this turn, which I wouldn't, then I would raise this bet because I would assume that a raise is just like a normal bet. If I was going to check behind, then I would either call or fold depending on my hand strength. So if I'm, I'm going to check this turn back. So I'm just going to call here. Uh, get an eight to one. We have to call. <laughs> Real nice run out. Uh, blast. He's probably going to have a lot of folds, but he has some jack axe, so just bet pot or close to pot. Um, I don't hate the turn check with the ace-10. I think that's fine. I wouldn't hate bluffing. Um, yeah, so again, this kind of spot here, right? So he snap folds. So a lot of the time he's going to have some showdown or he's going to have nothing. Because draws missed and we don't have many 5x, he should be check calling pretty much any size. So I think that betting this size is fine. I much prefer this size to say a third part. I think a third would be trash with this hand. But I think we can just literally go pot. And for the time he wants to check call with a jack or a nine, we get two more big blinds, which in the long run adds up. So I'd just bet pot there. Easy call versus a bet, size dependent, and easy bet versus a check, yeah. Call here, if he's got a flush, good luck to him. <clears throat>
Got a flush, good luck to him. Jack Nine we can defend, especially versus his size. Reasonable board for us. I think when we have a club, we should always check raise this flop. And everyone just keeps checking back. And then just bet turn, probably bet river. I don't mind what size you use, but we have a lot of equity here, so I'm fine going big. I'll check on like a five and stuff. I might even bet small on this river here. I might bet a third. I also don't mind check calling. We have the best hands so often here. It's just what can call us worse. Maybe like sevens, ace five. I think bet in the river. He's just going to check back and we win every time. He's probably got like sevens or like ace five. So I think we can bet small for value. Ace queen, he might even call that. I just don't think he bluffs enough. So we want to bet. So when you consider that, it, it, all right, we, it, it's not like we've got an amazingly strong hand, but with the with the lines taken, we have the best hand so often that if we check, I don't think he's going to bluff a lot on that river. So I'm more just inclined to bet because I think I have the best hand. Yeah, we do need to consider that we need to get called by a worse hand. But if I think he's just always checking back and not bluffing enough, then I'm going to bet thinner and thinner. 7-5 suited, probably defending it. Yeah, I'm definitely defending it. And obviously folding. <laughs> what is he doing? <laughs> Tag him as a fun player. Blasting this into four players isn't very good. Even with a 10, it's not great. And with anything else, it's not great. So I'd be very interested to see what he's got. Raise caller, min raise with a 10. I guess he can be targeting like eights and shit. Like he can have like aces, but he can just have like 10 x Like we went fucking far away, man. <laughs> yeah, tag that guy's a fucking whale. Good effort, like, but he's flop on <laughs> mate. That's a that's a whale. Again, this kind of loose play, just don't bother. Just take a flop with it, in my opinion. Sometimes you get limp raised and then you don't get to see your equity. <laughs> Other times you flop trip sevens. Uh, probably betting this flop with the deuces. I'm just blasting here against a fun player. I'm betting bigger. <laughs> uh, now check call and turn and check fold and river. <laughs> call this turn and then probably fold river. Three bet queens, we go three way. Let's start blasting. <laughs> There's actually argument for Donk leading here so he doesn't check back a flush. I don't hate it against a fun player. I actually don't hate it. And then we just bat fold. And I'd be doing this with an ace as well, probably. Yeah, when he has a flush, it kind of sucks. Yeah, I, I honestly think there's there's argument for dunk leading. Okay, so the the queens, we three bat to eight big blinds. Cold called and the original razor calls. I'm actually okay with going big on this size, even though multi-way we generally want to pick smaller sizes. I actually like it because of what we're trying to get called by. Uh, they both might have pocket tens, but like if they've got pocket tens, so be it. Like he snap calls a ten, comes a king, probably side checking. He can have some king x of hearts here. We can just bet like our full range on this ten 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 board. No, we definitely want to bet fives. Just seeing any card is a disaster. Why would we? Why would we ever check fives? Check raising is not really like that good of a thing. All it does is deny equity. Definitely want to bet those fives because pretty much every card is bad. Oh, we get a nice price to call with the queens at least. Hopefully we see like ace 10 suited. Easy call there, getting an amazing price. Now it's getting thin with fives. Like just bet, put money in when we have a strong hand. What are you doing with queens? It's the easiest call ever. Look at how much. Right, seeing as you, you probably relatively new here to it, you have to consider what price you're getting. He's bet $12 into 57. So $70 in the pot. So we're getting, what's that, six to one? That means we're getting six to one. We need to be right one in seven times here. That was just like, again, just the easiest call in the world. There's no other option. There's argument for raising. There's actually argument for jamming it for value. Again, this kind of spot, like maybe you're just focusing on this hand or something, but like, we're getting seven. We need to be right one in seven times. Look at that price we're getting. This is something you need to consider. You, you, you direct odds. 12 into 57. 12, like 12 into win 70. It's the easiest call in the world. So easy. Make sure you look at the price you're getting. We beat value. Ace 10 suited. Jacks. We beat all bluffs. We need to be right one in seven times. So if we call that six times in a row and they have it every single time, the seventh time when they randomly have jacks, we make money. Just make sure you recognize stuff like that, pot odds in poker. Google on the topic, make sure you reach, because that's just, again, that's a, that's a, that's a second decision. 
In fact, no, I'd take longer than a second. I would, I'd be like, ooh, can I raise? And then I might consider raising and then I'd be like, nah, fuck it, I'll just call. And I would have already called at this point. The fact that you've taken that long shows a lack of understanding in terms of pot odds. We're getting such a good price. I assume that you were just confused about this spot, but this button basically is completely inactive in this spot. These are the only two things that you can... If you were debating between raising, I can understand it, but fold would be absolutely nowhere near in that spot. So just make sure I, I, I'd look into, you know, I'd look into pot odds and stuff like that and just make sure that you're aware of that. So look into pot odds, just make sure you're aware of, you know, what hands, like when you should be calling in terms of, you know, if, if you're getting a really good price, you have to call wider. That's the idea of it, right? If somebody 4x pot jams, you don't have to call that much. But if somebody bats one big blind into 50, you're going to have to call mega wide because of, you know, because of how, what, what kind of price that you're getting. So make sure that you utilize that. Preflop you seem okay with. I would stop opening some of those looser hands, like, you know, ISOing the King Jack off um, versus the limps. ISO in the 5-7 suited, you know, raising the Jack-8 suited, stuff like that, because you're going to be making some mistakes post-flop. So just be a bit tighter in those kind of spots, especially out of position, because you don't get to realize your equity as easily. Being too passive in some spots, like with pocket jacks on a king-eye board, you know, we, we kind of want to just bet our range in general on that board, blind on blind, but also we can get called by so many worse hands. The, 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 good, the good thing about betting a third part on that kind of board is we force our opponent to call with quite a wide range. So he, he has to call with a lot of hands. I don't think he was too bad on rivers, to be honest. There was just that jack nine, which is thin for value. It's not like a, a fist pump value bet, but I just think just when you get to rivers, just think about what you're trying to achieve with your bets. Like with the ace king bluff that I didn't like, just think what you're trying to get to fold, what hand you can actually represent, how often you think it's going to work and how low down in your range you are. Um, same as when you call in, you know, if somebody bets really big, you've got to consider how high up in your range you are. Like if you're if you've got a pair of deuces on an ace king something something board and you can have aces you know an ace a king something like that you don't need to call and think oh I don't believe him because you have better hands in your range that you'll play similarly that you can call with. I think you'll probably be making money in the pools again. I think your win rate is kind of reflected in your play. I know that it's only in like less than hundred k hands, but it kind of makes sense that your win rate is something like that. Like that's the win rate I'd expect you to have just because of the way you play is it's not really aggressive enough and it's not it's not refined enough you're not value you know you, you are you will be missing some value and i think you're going to be bluffing in spots that aren't going to be good bluffs and missing some good bluff spots as well